Good morning, everyone. Today I have decided to talk to you about the role uh, faith plays in shaping art. And in, while doing so, we will look at some of the images collected from various fields and periods of art, mainly focusing on South and Southeast Asia. So what is visual art? The focus of today's lecture is on visual arts. It can be divided into form and content. Form refers to structure or composition, just as in two-dimensional art, you have painting or graphic design. Three-dimensional art, you have sculpture or architecture. And in fourth dimension, or what we call now virtual art, we have this latest technology of digital media art. So now, I have examples from very, very beginning of civilization, the earliest prehistoric uh, bison from Altamira in Spain, which is 25,000 years ago, and the 2,500-year-old great bull from the Indus Valley civilization. So here, what do we see? Both of these images have been inspired by beliefs, ideas, and purpose evolved collectively by a community that it made sense to them, right? So, moving on to our presentation, Closer Home in Asia or Southeast Asia, we will be looking at what does symbolism in art refer to. And here I quote from an Indian um, or South Asian uh, art historian and philosopher, the great Ananda Kumaraswamy, who pointed out that the human body and a temple building are both reflections of the micro macrocosm in microcosm and vice versa. So we will see throughout this, uh, through this presentation how this concept or the idea can be applied to understand the structure of a temple or a work of art in Indian uh, or South Asian art. So next we look at how Religion developed in advanced uh, civilizations such as India and China. And here is an example of the Hindu epic Ramayana. Uh, and we look at it or examine it from the perspective of history and not necessarily religion that gave rise to so many interpretations in Asia through visual and performative ex experiences. I hope all of you know the monkey god Hanuman that is represented here. So take, for example, the iconic worship or the icon of Hanuman, who's very, very famous and represented through poster art, murals, paintings, including shadow puppets and uh, popular culture icons. Notice his lovable character as represented in popular art or in posters, and the film, the famous film Journey to the West as Su Wukong and also as a, as a lovable um, hanging that you put as a lucky charm in your bus or truck or a car for protection uh, and safe travels. So this shows how a myth or an image or a concept actually becomes popular across Asia. And art also has a certain purpose, which is designed by the craftsman or the artist or the artisan community including patron. And this gives an idea of how to understand or interpret art through captions, as in narrative captions, or through artist statements, which contemporary artists do, or through enculturation by being immersed in that culture from which art emerges. Now we look at the examples of amazing visual symbolism of fertility. And these are examples, again, drawn from uh, European art. This is a great uh, Venus of Willendorf, who has been nicknamed because of the fertility symbolism, and the uh, Indian goddess bearing lotuses, and the symbol of prosperity and abundance in Buddhist art of India, all referring to abundance, prosperity, and gains that human society always aspires to, for which it has evolved symbolisms all the way from prehistoric art to uh, advanced civilizations such as the uh, Amaravati sculptures of the Buddhist period. <clears throat> so here, the bejeweled primordial mother goddesses 
and the diagrammatic representation, this is an abstract representation of the fertility concept as in Sri Yantra, uh, or as the decorated, richly decorated um, Devi Shakambari, who is adorned with fruits and flower, flowers, fruits and vegetables, which signifies abundance of fru food, progeny and prosperity. Now let's examine the importance and the evolution of temple architecture from the very humble beginnings of open air enclosures such as these, uh, from the circular and wagon vaulted roof structures seen at Amaravati and Bharut stupas, which you can see here. Here you can see the Bodhi tree being, being worshipped and these are very early sim symbols of Buddha which people began to uh, worship and early architecture in India emerges around these structures. As well as <clears throat> in temple architecture, which is the Hindu temple architecture, you will see these kind of single cell shrines with pillar hall that you see from Sanchi temple number 17. And this brings us to the idea of stylistic differences. There are three different forms that evolve in Indian temple architecture. Nagara, the North Indian, Dravida, the South Indian, and Vesara, the hybrid of both. And Southeast Asian temples can be actually interpreted as the Vesara style. Now, how does a concept or a temp of the temple building get evolved as civilizations advance? They are conceived as abodes or residences of gods. They manifest the supernatural and the omnipresent, which is actually occupying the ground plan of a building. So here is what is called the Vastu Purusha Mandala, which is fitted into the uh, ground plan of a temple for, uh, for auspiciousness and for prosperity and success of the temple. Or as Meru ascending up to the heavens, which is a superstructure. So that's from Bali. Moving on to the alignment of human body with the temple. Uh, the body of the temple aligning with the body of a human, body, a human being, as we saw as a reference from the uh, Kumara Swami um, quotation just now. So here what you see is that various parts of the temple coordinate with the various parts of the human body and these, uh, and also the chakras for meditation that manifest the macrocosm in microcosm as what uh, Kumara Swami pointed out, that what is outward and visible can also be interpreted as internal and uh, invisible. So these are very fine and very highly philosophical concepts that I'm trying to compress in this visual and hope you can imagine the enormity, the beauty, the structure, and the detailing of, of all the carvings from uh, this marble temple in Western India. So how did the idea of this elaborate superstructure evolve in temples as well as in stupa architecture, the Buddhist stupa architecture. This would be the topic of a completely separate lecture. But all I'm trying to show is to in invo involve or invoke your interest in looking at the various details of the structure and how the narratives elaborate the storytelling as part of the beautification or decoration of the uh, torana of the Buddhist uh, temple architecture, or Buddhist uh, structures. Such similar forms can also be seen in the Chaityas. So those were the previous slide from Sanchi is an open air structure. Now these are structures which were hewn out or carved out of a live rock. And these are from Western India. You, this is called Bhaja. And this is of course Ajanta, which is the most beautiful and elaborately embellished uh, Chaitya, all made out of one rock. So it's not a structural, uh, a, a building, but it's a building which is carved out of one single piece of rock. So this also shows the importance given to uh, understanding architecture and its meaning and purpose in a society. And so this is a world, a UNESCO recognized World Heritage Site of great uh, significance and repute. Now, my last slide is a quote from Umberto Eco. Uh, important semiotician who writes on film. And what he tries to tell us is very important. Look at every visual or an image as text and read 
it from the perspective of multiple meanings that it throws up in our understanding of visual arts. So in conclusion, faith shapes art, and art conveys ideas of faith. Thus, both coexist, especially in highly spiritual and philosophical arts of South and Southeast Asia. Thank you.